Next we have Kyle Jordan talking about the thermocouple time constant experiment. <coughs> All right, good afternoon everyone. My name is Kyle Jordan and I will be talking about the thermocouple time constant experiment. So here's the table of contents. Uh, I'll be talking about the definition of time constant, the apparatus that we use, uh, the objectives of the experiment, the procedure that we went through, uh, graphs of heating, cooling, and the overall uh, data that we came up with, and also the time constant results. So what is a time constant? Well, it's uh, defined as the time it takes to decay 63.2% of the data closest to like your asymptotic uh, final result. So you can find it using the equation the rho VCV over uh, H in the area. But um, we did it graphically for this, experiment, for this experiment. So this is the apparatus. You have your thermocouple right here, type K, 500 milliliter flask filled halfway with water, a uh, heat plate, and then this is your PDAC, uh, like data acquisition system that sends it to your computer. Uh, the objectives of the experiment were to Record the transient response of the 18, the 1 8 inch type K thermocouple. Uh, perform the necessary manipulations using Excel. Uh, graph those results, and then determine the time constant for heating and cooling. Um, our procedure that we went through: we uh, first turn the heat <coughs> plate on to get the water up to a boil then began our data acquisition and promptly inserted the thermocouple into the boiling water. Once it reached a steady state, a maximum steady state, we removed the thermocouple, wiped the sensor off with a paper towel, and then wait for it to return back to an ambient room temperature, and then we stopped our data acquisition. So this is the overall data. Here you can see the heating which is much faster than the cooling. We did um, five data points per second. And um, like I said, clearly, like heating is much faster than the cooling aspect. This is uh, heating temperature versus time. I chose our zero time to be right before we stuck the thermocouple into the water. And then once it began to level off, I cut it off. And you can see it took only like two seconds for it to go from our minimum to near our maximum. Uh, this is the normalized curve. <clears throat> Basically normalization just brings your range from zero to one and it kind of eliminates your like outliers in your data to dominate your graph. So you can see in a much smaller scale what's going on. So I chose, for my graph, I did the log on the y-axis and the time on the x, which gives you a reciprocal value right here. So whenever you go to do your time constant, you just do the opposite and the reciprocal, which I will show later. This equation, that's what you use to get your time constant, the slope value. This is the graph of cooling, the temperature versus time, the overall. Uh, like my predecessor, I have a small blip on the scale, which I'm not really sure what that is. That might be where we wipe the water off and then it continued a slow descent to ambient room temperature. This is again the normalized curve for cooling. It just like I said, zero to one scale, and it uh, kind of eliminates the outliers from dominating your graph. Though we didn't really have any outliers on this uh, on this experiment. This is the log versus time cooling graph. Um, my gibberish is on the y-axis versus the x, which his was, but you use.